A few weeks ago, I received a request to talk about the comma operator in JavaScript. Now, I have seldom used the comma operator, so I did some research on possible use cases. In this tutorial, we will cover the comma operator in full detail. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. Now, as mentioned, I have not used the comma operator much at all. I think perhaps a few times in a loop, but that is about all. So I did some research and found this great article by Angus Kroll. I will include a link to it in the description section. Now Angus Kroll, he wrote one of my favorite books, this book right here on JavaScript. Now it's, it's not my favorite book because it taught me a ton about JavaScript. I simply like it because it was so creative and Angus I find is very creative in his approach to JavaScript. Now in this the start of this article which he wrote there's he begins with this funny tweet. It says it may be easier to memorize the order of operator precedence in JavaScript via this helpful abbreviation. And then it has a single letter for all the different operators in the order. And the reason he he throws this tweet out is cuz of a very important concept about the comma operator. And that is, he says, the very last C in this list is the comma operator. So in the order of precedence, as operators are concerned, it is the weakest. It is the last operator to be considered. And that's important to remember when you're using the comma operator. Now, the second thing to realize about the comma operator in JavaScript is that it's the comma itself serves two purposes. Sometimes it simply acts like a separator. And that can be seen when you declare variables in a list or when you define an object using little literal notation or define an array. Here's an example of all three of those. So here we are declaring variables and I've separated those by a comma. So that's simply a separator. Inside of the object literal notation, we separate the key value pairs with a comma. And then also inside an array, we separate the elements with a comma. So in those applications, the comma is a separator. It is not an operator. So what does it do when it's an operator? What is the purpose of the comma operator? Well, let's look at a definition really quick. The comma operator evaluates each of its operands from left to right and returns the value of the last operand. So in the case of a left and right operand, the operand on the right gets returned. Now, in order to understand this definition, we need to just give a quick reminder of what an operand is. And basically, the operand is the part of the expression that specifies what data is to be manipulated or operated on by that operator. So 1 plus 3 plus is the operator. 1 and 3 are operands. So let's look at some examples that show the comma operator in use. And these ones I'm just going to do on the console right now. So let me open up the console. And the first statement is simply going to be this. Let I equal, and then I'm going to put parentheses, and I'll explain that in a minute, 8 comma 10. So here is the comma operator. In this case, it is not a separator. It is the comma operator. It's going to eval evaluate the operands and return the last one. So what does I equal? I equals 10. It evaluates both of these, but it returns the last one. Now, the reason I have to put parentheses here is because of operator precedence. And since the comma operator is the last operator to be applied, I need to put parentheses around it to make sure this is used in this expression. Otherwise, it would set i equal to 8. All right, let's look at another example. Let j equal parentheses again. This one, this time, will do much more. So now we have more inside this parentheses. 
What is it going to be equal to? What will J be equal to? Well, the comma operator says to do both of them, but return the last. So J should be equal to seven. So if I type J, sure enough, it's equal to seven. All right, another example, let X equal one, and then X, we'll set that equal to X and the increment operator and X. Now what will X be equal to in this case? Comma operator here. We press return. X is equal to two. Now the reason that works is because with the comma operator, this first part is done. So it increments X by one and then it returns X. So the second one is what gets returned. So what gets assigned to X is this value here. So we're able to do something and then return a value. So that's the comma operator. Now you can also have the comma operator more than once. Let's take a quick look at that. So if I do I again, and let's just put multiple numbers in here. Whoops, I forgot my equal. equal in there, press return again, and we can see that i is equal to seven. So the last one is what gets returned. So now you can see how the comma operator works, but where would the comma operator be useful? Now it's most useful in these types of situations. It lets you put more than one expression in JavaScript where only one expression is expected. Now this allows you to be more concise with your code and loops are a common example where this is used. So that's what we're going to look at first is a for loop. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy that in and then we'll talk about it. This is our first example of a for loop here. Now this first comma here, this is just a separator. This is allowing us to declare more than one variable, just like we saw up here. Okay, so that's not a comma operator there. Then we have our expression, which is in the second part of the for loop to determine how long the loop should go. Here is where we're able to use a comma operator to put more than one expression. We increment the i and we increment the j. We increment both of those. And then down here in the body of the loop, we simply add the two together and log to the console. So let me save that and we'll refresh and see if we get those numbers. So we get those odd numbers with the exception of one. So it runs through the loop, logs the console, both of those added together, then it increments. And it does both of these because of the comma operator, it does both of them. It returns the last one, but that really doesn't matter much in this particular example. So that is a common place to use a comma operator is in a loop. Now let's take a look at a more useful loop. This one just illustrates it, but let's look at an example that's a bit more useful. And we'll do a loop that computes a Fibonacci sequence. Now a Fibonacci sequence is simply a sequence of numbers where the next number in the sequence is the sum of the previous two numbers. And it usually starts with zero and one. So a simple Fibonacci sequence would be zero, one, and then zero plus one is one. So zero, one, one, one plus one is two. So zero, one, one, two, and then three, and then five, and so on. So that would be a Fibonacci sequence. It's a common exercise to figure out how to do a Fibonacci sequence. So let's look at a loop that would allow us to do it in a single loop without anything in the body of that loop. This comes from uh, one of the examples in the Angus Kroll article. So this is a single for loop without a body. Notice there are no curly braces to enclose the body of the for loop. It is simply for and then in parentheses. And we're able to accomplish everything 
because of the comma operator. So right here, we're declaring the variables. Once again, that's just a separator. Here's the second part of the for loop definition. We want to run this loop while i is less than 15. So a Fibonacci sequence of that many numbers is basically what we're looking at. Then right here, here's where we increment i to keep the loop moving. But we have a comma operator that separates this expression. So we do this expression as well. So basically, up here we declared an array and we started it with 0 and 1. And then we push on to that array, i minus 1, that element, plus i minus 2. So we're adding the two previous. See, i is equal to 2 right now. So i minus 1 would be this one. i minus 2 would be this one. So we're adding those two values together and we're putting it onto the array using the push method. We're able to do this both together because of the comma operator. So let's go ahead and run that and see, take a look at R and see what we get. So I refresh. Now if I take a look at R, we can see it as an array and it is a Fibonacci sequence. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so on. So I like that application. Now, while loops, I think, are also a very good indicator of the value of the comma operator. Once again, it helps you make succinct code, more concise code if you choose to. So let me just set up a simple while loop. We have a counter equal to 0. And then while The counter is equal to 100. That's what we want to run the loop for. Now, as you know, when you define a while loop, you need to put the expression in here that determines how long the loop will run. And then we'll just simply log to the console. Now, normally what we do in a while loop, when you have something like this that we're working with, is we increment that counter and we do it in the body of the while loop. We do it down here. But using the comma operator, we can do it before. Just like that. So it'll increment the counter, but the last part of the comma operator gets returned. And so the expression is still evaluated here because this is the last part. All right, let's take a look at that. And we can see all those numbers come out. Now, what would happen if we reverse the order of this? And over on this side, we did a comet, then the counter plus the increment operator. What would happen? Well, our loop would never execute because while is checking the condition first. This is not the condition that gets checked because the last thing that is returned is right here. And so it really can't process that and the while loop never continues. It stops at that point. So that's why we would do it before. Now, one last example I want to show you, and this is my favorite example. Um, and this is using the comma operator with the ternary conditional. Now, if you have not used the ternary operator, I have another tutorial, and I'll include a link to it in the description of this tutorial. So I'd advise you to take a look at that tutorial first so you're familiar with the ternary operator. So let's look at a basic ternary operator first. And I'm going to paste that in again. This is going to be a function. And I'm going to use this object I've created up here to test this function. You can see that it has a score and it's set to 90. So what we've done down here in this function we I've created is we're able to pass in an object and then we're able to pass in a score. And then it will check to see if the score of the object is greater than the score we pass in. If so, it will set a pass attribute on that object equal to true. Otherwise, it will set a pass attribute to false. Now, the ternary syntax allows for only one statement in each of its three components. Statement here, statement here, and statement here. 
And generally, if you need more than one statement, then you should use an if then else. But sometimes it might be more readable to do it all in a ternary operator. You can do that with a comma operator as a part of it. So let's look at how we do that. Say I wanted to set two things on the object. obj.pass equals true, and let's also set obj.complete equals true. And then obj.pass equals false, obj.complete false. Now, one other thing I need to do here is put parentheses. I want to make sure I do that. Whoops, wrong part. You can find when you need parentheses if you get a syntax error. That's usually what you get when you don't have the parentheses. So let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to refresh and then call pass or fell. And I'm going to pass in OBJ. And I'm going to pass in 85 as the score. Now let's take a look at OBJ. And if we open that up, we can see that both complete and pass were added to that object. And so I was able to do both with that ternary operator because of the comma operator. So another application, that comma operator. Now, if you want to explore some more detail, I recommend you go look at that article by Ingus Kroll. There's, he has a number of additional applications that you can look at. So that is the comma operator. And I hope you found that helpful. If so, hit the like button. Also hit the bell button to be notified when new tutorials become available. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for full courses and to support this channel. Thanks for watching.